How can you have one of the most powerful brands of all time and one of the weakest brands of all time at the same time? time i know it sounds impossible but if you legitimately want to build a great personal brand brand in general for your product your music of course because that's what we do you need to watch this episode because i think it will give you the greatest understanding of how this junk actually works and how we've built multiple brands for us and artists and companies at the same time i'm brand man sean and i'm Corey, and this is yet another episode of no labels necessary all right, all right, Corey. I got a clip for you, sir. Let's do it. They will watch this clip, and I don't know if they will understand. I don't know if they will understand. However, this clip is talking about an artist that every single one of y'all know. Every single one of y'all know this artist <laughs> has a great brand, yet they have a horrible brand. And I, I, I hope y'all get it by the end of this episode. But we're gonna workshop how to fix everything. Everything? Every, most things. <laughs> and I think it'll help y'all out. Check out this clip right here. Rihanna did what I thought Beyonce would do when it comes to um, building a business. And what I mean by this is, and Beehive, don't kill me, but Beyonce does not have a strong personal brand. Yes, she is a celebrity, but she does not have a strong personal brand whatsoever. That's why any venture that she pursues outside of music if you notice it doesn't do that well and the core reason behind that is Beyonce has in a way made her life so private and herself kind of unreachable that when she puts out a product it's hard for us to connect to the product because we can't really connect to her as a human we don't believe that she's using the things that she's selling us the perfume house of Darion. Even the collaboration with Adidas. All right, shout out to the AK brand on Instagram for this take. This is actually something I've talked about with multiple people. We've had conversations like this before. I actually talked about this with my sister last week before I saw this clip. And Beyonce is a perfect example of understanding the difference between brand as in general, personal brand, and there's other subsets. And I think it's important to understand these because it'll help you define your brand and strategically apply your moves when necessary to get the outcome that you expect, mm -hmm. right? Because people are surprised. It's the same reason that people be surprised that they have a lot of followers and when they drop some music and they don't see the streams they want, yep. right? It's just yep. a misunderstanding of which brand applies where and how do you implement things, yep. all right? So Beyonce, there's a lot of love for you in this room. <laughs> there's a whole lot of love for you in this room. Please don't get this twisted. Please, nobody uh, chop, chop this to, to misconstrue it. But I think it's amazing to have this example because people actually use success to discredit somebody's next success. They think just because you're successful, the, the other thing that launched, oh, that wasn't a big deal. Of course, Beyonce is supposed to win. But what about Beyonce's failures? You get what I'm saying? She just went yeah. through multiple brands that fail. It doesn't transfer. It's always hard. It might be easier for a Beyonce, but it's always hard to launch your next thing. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll take it a step further. Artists like to use these bigger artists as examples and when they're not doing certain things. I know we about to get into it, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, they'll be like, hey, like, she ain't got to do it. And it's like, mm, mm, she probably should be doing it. You know yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's not hitting like it could hit <laughs> or hitting at all in this particular case. Yeah. So, Here's a couple of things that should that should uh, order your steps, as my my people, my elders say. Believability is a big thing. Huge thing. All right. You can't just hop into any pond and expect that thing to splash if we don't really care about you or know or associate you with that thing. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to give you a second while I'm talking to think of an example of somebody like if they launch, if this person launched this brand, you wouldn't believe it. Even though somebody else might be doing it successfully. Like, like this it just doesn't matter. Product right? that she's talking about? No, oh, a brand. Just, like, just okay, an example. Okay, just yeah, an example. Yeah. But like Beyonce, you had fashion. Yeah, Rihanna launched fashion successfully. Um, Kanye launched fashion successfully. Diddy launched fashion successfully. Jay Z actually launched fashion successfully. Far and, and even if you don't think of Diddy, no, Diddy like really killed it. Y'all like just are. Missing if you don't think he killed it, but even if you don't think of Jay Z on the level of a Diddy or a Kanye or Rihanna, like 
he's done it successfully in comparison to what beyond and moving culturally in comparison to what Beyonce did fashion wise. Right. And why is that? Well, Beyonce, we don't really think of her when it comes to how she dresses. Right. You don't like you will look at her outfit and might be say that's dope. But Rihanna like built a brand around how she dresses. It, it became a thing. Mm -hmm. So if no one's talking about you for that in particular, then when you launch something because of that, then you can't expect them to feel the influence. Like you're, yeah. you're not into fashion magazines. I mean, you are for like the official Beyonce release stuff, but it's not like regular fodder. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, because fashion is about how consistently do we see you dress well? You know what I'm saying? Consistently, so like, or at least do you have a particular style that we can associate you with? Yeah. Like Erica Badu with the hats at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so we don't even think of how what you're wearing outside of like, oh, you look amazing right now. But if you thought about like, well, how does Beyonce dress? What does that mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Outside of the theme for a specific project. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking, right? Like, because she mentioned like, I think she said it like, Beyonce don't really go outside like that and you gotta come outside yeah you gotta come especially like i said fashion is like like i said a lot of the stuff in fashion is how consistently do we see you dress well to your point is there a unique aesthetic to you and yeah like anytime we see her being fashion was either in like an editorial mm -hmm. it's for a project so it's these situations where it's like yeah you look good like you look nice but like I'm only seeing you in this context of like, you know, like most of the time when Beyonce posts stuff, it's like her in a, at an event or something like a gala yep. or yep. something like really upscale where like I expect you to be dressed nicely. Mm -hmm. In this situation versus like Rihanna, like you would see pictures of her like walking through a gas station looking looking like she's dressed nice or yeah. like actually dressed nice. So you, you believe like it's like, oh, with Beyonce, I'm thinking like, hey, maybe she gets dressed really well for these special occasions. Versus Rihanna, it's like, oh, no, she do this shit every day. You know and saying? it's, like, not just a fancier dress with the Rihanna. Mm -hmm. Like, it could be a, you just got on a jean Some shit regular jacket. people wear. Like, it'll feel regular, yeah. right? And that's what um, the AK brand focused on. She said, untouchable, unreachable. Mm -hmm. Beyonce has one of the most, like, unreachable brands there are, untouchable brands. Mm -hmm. When you say the Queen Bee, she actually, a lot of artists say on this, I'm this queen boss stuff. She actually gets treated like a queen yeah. uh, in comparison to anybody else. And when people think about her for a brand, they think about execution. Like she's on point at mm -hmm. all times. Yep. She's amazing yep. performer. Yep. But eh, when it comes to this, this it doesn't tie together. So look, y'all, like even Beyonce needs to come outside. Does she have to come outside? Yeah. No. But even her, <laughs> she would benefit <laughs> from coming outside more and being seen in that way, just being less yep. private. And that's where I get to the, the second um, point of it. Be outside to promote. Yep. All right, so Jay-Z, I talked about like him doing well and was successful with the rock aware. Obviously, there was a whole Rockefeller movement around it. You had all these touch points of people actively being outside all the time, like moving it. So that gave like a reference point versus... I just see these fashion law, uh, what is like these editorials and all the things that you referenced before. Yeah. So if you aren't like touch touching the people, moving and just around, man, like as a regular brand, you can put your weight behind other companies that aren't built or supposed to be associated with you in a personal way. Like you're investing in something or you're giving something a cosign. But if it's something that's supposed to be a little bit more personal around what you would do on your day-to-day -day life, then like perfume, um, like fashion, uh, hair, hair care products. Definitely the hair. We're gonna we're gonna actually workshop this hair care and tell you everything she needs to do to fix this to make this hair care launch a success. We'll see which how y'all feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> but but um like there there's even if it was I don't know I feel like when it's a star at this level, even if it was something like a toothbrush or so, it just, if it's something that a person would use that's personal, it has to match with the personal brand. Like, oh, it's liquor and all this. I got to see and feel for it to really be successful. Cause there's a lot of stars that are way less untouchable than Beyonce to have liquors. And I'm like, eh, I don't really see you. Like I see you get mentioned with the liquor in your music mm -hmm. video, yeah. but I don't see you using it from a legitimate lifestyle. Yeah. aspect of it yeah it's like with 
you know, Diddy and Ciroc is like, you believe it because you see him outside. Yes. Fucked up off of it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's pushing it on you. He's using it. Like, it's there. Yeah. It is there in your face. So if you want to do something like that and y'all are if y'all are building up brands like my merch and things like that, some artists don't want to be associated with their merch at all. Well, hey, man, you need to build some merch that you want to wear yourself, especially yeah. today. Like that might have worked way back, maybe. But like you got to wear your merch sometimes. Yeah, cause People notice that, man. I, I will look at like great example of artists that wears their own merch like Kanye and Travis. They wear their, a lot yes. of their own stuff. Yep. And when you see artists that don't do it, you start your hind brain goes like, "Damn, if you wouldn't wear it, why? Would I? Like, you won't wear this symbol that represents. Like, you put this whole mm-hmm. creative thing together, and you won't put it on. Why am I gonna? Why am I, why am I gonna spend eighty dollars on it? My, you know what I love about you, man. I admire you. I want to be like you. And you don't want. This and shit. you don't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Something you have like subconsciously consciously tells me this might be whack, bro. Why am I going to do that? Hey, just want to drop this quick mention. If you're looking for help in blowing up your music and your career as a whole this year, at the beginning of every year, we open up to find new artists that we want to work with and continue to grow throughout the year, which has resulted in many of the big moments that you hear us talk about. So at this time, we've opened up where you'll be able to see how we approach things from ground zero, digging into your brand identity translating that into content, advertising, and full-blown campaigns that result in streams and real fans. And it's only $1 at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. I'll put a link in the description below. But beyond that process, we actually have ways to speak, get to know you, watch you grow throughout your process so we can lean in and offer extra advising on how to navigate what you're going through in real time. So if you want some real help without having to sign your life away, Check it out at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. Either way it goes, best of luck to you and your career. And then we get to the next thing. Um, you mentioned talking to fans. Oh, yeah. Right? And that like actually making that connection. So you said, I- I'll let you give your examples first. Um, like talking to fans, like what were some of the examples? And then I'll kind of like add to it. Yeah, the, the two I gave was um, one, she doesn't do any type of live streaming. I Person, I could be wrong, but I've personally never seen Beyonce on like an Instagram live stream or mm-hmm. a YouTube live stream, like nothing like that. Something where, and you know, no, live streaming for a lot of artists and creators in general is one of the more popular ways to digitally interact with fans right now. Mm-hmm. Let me go live, talk to them for 10, 15 minutes and get off. Right. So in all of the years that lives have been popular, and that's probably going like four or five years at this point, I don't think she's ever done one. Yeah. Crazy. Second one is the other really popular fan interaction tool right now is doing small pop-ups and events. Like we've seen legacy acts do them. We've seen big acts do them. We've seen, you know, upcomers like LaRussell do them, right? That, like that's that's a that's a trend right now. Like people doing these small put together pop-up events. Now, small for Beyonce would be way bigger than yeah, most artists. Yeah, way bigger than most artists. But I don't I don't think I've seen her even attempt to put something like that together. It's like you said earlier, right? Like her brand is, hey, this is big. And when you see it, it's going to be huge. And it's going to be a shit ton of people here. And it's going to yep. be this massive event. But it's like sometimes fans just want to be in a room with like only 200 other fans. And right. like, like you, you know what I'm saying? And she doesn't give she doesn't give the options. Like you only can go to the big events. Like you don't even get the option to experience her in a smaller or more intimate setting. From from what I've witnessed in like her last two or three drops, you know, right. and the, it's important to understand that this doesn't mean the fans like you any less. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. we like you any less. It's just that I'm not gonna run to you for that. You know what I mean? Like yep. I never hear you talk about that. Uh, like I don't associate you with that. That's like, oh, yo, Jacory, bro. Guess what, man? I just li- I got this new house, man. I met this random realtor, and they were dope. I was looking for the house. I ended up, you know, doing that. I mean, I'm getting a house and using that that person as my realtor. And you're like, what, Sean? How come you ain't come to me? I do real estate. And I'm like, bro, you've never talked to me about real estate. You be talking about music and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's like it's just houses not- now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, it's a disconnect that happens at that point. And a huge part of what you said is like, everything is so big. Everything is this massive event. And it works in your favor to create this um this desire, let this build up happen, mm-hmm. right? But at this point, should you break the internet by doing something off the cuff? Yeah. At least feels off the cuff, yeah. you know? It's 
it's interesting because it, it makes her feel archaic in a sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because I got uh, I got the word. The artist brand of being like bigger than life isn't as popular of a thing as it used to be, right? We are in the era where relatability wins out for a like 80% of ours. Like there's going to always 80% be- 80% of people and industries and everything. Oh yeah, you're right. Cause I mean, cause like, you know, listeners, y'all got to think bro, like the average, let's just say creator fan feels like they are friends with their favorite creators across the board. Not even just music artists. We're talking about YouTubers, you know what I'm saying? TikTokers, like Instagram creators. They're like, like they feel one, like I know you and two, um, like there are some areas where we're on the same level. Mm-hmm. Right, and I can trust you, and I can trust you because you feel just like me. So now, uh, uh, I mean, I don't think I think if this was anybody else doing what she did, we would have heard backlash a long time ago. But because Beyonce, like, like I said, she gets, the the brand power is so strong, like it's gonna it's gonna she's always gonna come out on the other side, like at least okay, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, the music brand mm-hmm. and the brand we have for her in culture. Yep. Right, she has a great status from that standpoint of brand. She, and we know that she's going to kill it in that particular space, but that does not translate as your brand over there. Kanye works overtime whenever he goes into a new space mm-hmm. to convince you why he is that person on in this space and why he's better yep. than other people in that space, whether you believe him or not, or whether you even are educated enough in that space to yep. know whether it's true or not. Yeah, He's giving you a strong argument why this is gonna make sense? Yeah, because I remember when Kanye first started talking about the Yeezy brand, and you know he got the same backlash in the beginning, like oh it's just another artist money grab. But mm-hmm. I remember he started like releasing like sketches on mm-hmm. his, on his socials at the time. He was like showing you the vision. He was just showing like samples, mm-hmm. not, and not even like like the shoe sample, but just like I, I don't know what it's called, but designers are put together like these little packages where it shows like the materials and colors mm-hmm. and stuff they want. He was leaking all that shit. So at that point, you were like. Oh no! Like he really is behind the scenes, like working on this. So even if it was a point where, uh, let's say Kanye never wore the Yeezys, um, and we didn't have that same level of believability, I would have at least still felt like he cared because he showed us the attention to detail and, and like, him actually going through the process to create it. So it, it could have been a win-win on either side. Like it's like, hey, I can either believe that you really took time and energy energy to create this. Or I can believe that you actually like this enough to wear it. And he covered both sides of it. It's an easy way, man. That's where we move into, like, how do you fix this? How she could improve mm-hmm. the launch of this next era under hair care. And, like, you've already touched on it. And I think a lot of people immediately thought this. This is more believable. I don't know if you know that her mom had the hair salon growing oh, yeah, up, yeah. right? So yeah. already you think, okay, there, there's some yep. con- level of connection there. Yep. There's a background there. And I even think a big part of that would also even maybe be bringing the mom into the forefront. Yep. I don't know if there's a certain level you want to do that or not because, you know, you don't want to give mom too much of the bag. I don't know. I don't know. Like like that. They, have, they seem to have a great relationship. But like using more of that personal story, if you look back at the Bills Bills video they did early on, they were in the hair salon. I'm sure a lot of that background and how they thought of it probably came from that. Or that might have been the reason that they chose that in the Destiny Child's Bills, Bills, Bills video. So there's a great aspect to it there. I think adding her vision, though, in unofficial ways, like less constructed. There's a mini doc, right, yep. that's telling you why this is so important and I have this history there. No, not, not all that. You, we can have that. But... Not all that, like just, like you said, little snippets, maybe just talking about a fan or whatever, or like, hey, I want to do this. Maybe you, you got it planned that I'm going to have this type of hair care, like, I don't know, a line or a scent or whatever, mm. but just write, oh man, what do y'all think about this idea or this scent? Or I'm thinking that this is going to be dope. Like little things like that, mm. I don't see her brand, like her necessarily doing it like that, but that would set a tone that she's thinking about it. It's on her mind and give a sense to people that there's thought like yeah. of course you know there's thought but that i think that's the weird part that people don't get when it comes to brands um it's like language people can hear you say something but they didn't know that you meant it it's like bro i thought I, I thought i told you to bring the such and such it's like oh you were serious about that mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. i heard you but i didn't know that you <laughs> meant that shit for real for real so like Adding those small little elements 
for someone like her is is huge. And I think people don't realize that brand is all relative. What works for one person won't work for another person because of their positioning. So, so many people benefit from something that feels larger than life. So many people benefit from a super constructed, high quality documentary with great storytelling because it feels like something that's bigger than where they were before. Mm -hmm. But someone who's been so dominant, someone that people already hold in such high, high regard and so many people hold her in such high regard, doing something that feels normal, right? Like the goddess that has put her feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's what they talk about. You know what I mean? Like, all right, we, we say it like this. Humans being gods and gods being humans are the things that people talk about. Yeah. Right? Jesus being looked at as a human and then all of a sudden he resurrected on some God stuff. That's the story that people tell. Yeah. You get what I mean? And then if God came to the ground, right? We we'll definitely be talking about that. That will be the story to tell. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to talk about the God in the sky being the God in the sky or whatever, or you're not going to talk about the human being the human on the ground. It's when the that one does the opposite. Mm. And right now, from a brand perspective, she is this goddess in the sky. Mm -hmm. The story is putting your feet on the ground. Yeah, yeah, 100%. No, I agree. I think the add to that, because I, I think the salon style pop-up thing, that would be crazy, actually. I kind of hope they steal that idea so we can put this this part back out. That there. would be hard. It would yes. be hard. Yeah, yes, one hundred percent. I think those. I think what I would add to it is, I think she should take five beauty influencers, three really big ones, one mid-size, one newish to start up, send them products for free, and then do like a ten-minute customer review live stream with each of them. It'll mm -hmm. be far. I think that'll be cool because yeah. then you we begin straight out the horse's mouth. They probably gonna say nice things because they talking to Beyonce, you know. So it's a, it's a win win for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I think the second thing that I think could be cool. She did. Do you remember when Drake had that series where he was walking around New York in a disguise and like, asking people random questions? Mm -hmm. I think she could do a combination between that and the old school Pepsi challenge, and I think she could go out into the street or maybe not the street. I don't know how it works exactly, but some type of like product blind product, not taste test, but I guess sample test thing that she could do with random people in disguise and then mm -hmm. maybe at the end reveal, like, oh, it's really me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that could be hard. And then I think the only I, only other thing I, I think I would add to it too is going back to the live stream, I think she should do however many products there are, she should do one 20 to 30 minute live stream for each, maybe like one a week until she covers all of them where she is using the product on the live and then answering fan questions about it because each of those series are going to push people to either try their product or get curious and get the other mm -hmm. products. And if I don't have that particular product yet, um, then that could be the thing that pushes me over the edge. And if I do have that product, now I can kind of see, like, one, how she's using it. And then, two, I can get real-time responses from other people that have got it in the moment. So, you know, assuming thing is, is not a, you know, product that's fucking people up, that, that should go over pretty well. I think the, the breakdown should be cool, creative, and regular. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep, yep, so yep. cool. She's already done that. Like I don't know if you've noticed her. Well, if you I don't know. You didn't see the Super Bowl because you were out and about. I was. But like, <laughs> if, <laughs> bro, like they flashed on her for like half a second on the Super Bowl. She wasn't even a focus of the screen. And when I tell you, she looked way better than everybody in the screen. And I don't even mean like, oh, she looked good like in a sexual way. I'm talking about like, like she had a different lens on her. Yeah. Like there was a glow. Yeah. Right. And um, <laughs> when I look back at it with my wife, she was just like, like the hair was a big part of it. She was like, it's just that hair, the color. Like she just looked like she had hot HD on her. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody else looked horrible. <laughs> it was crazy. And that was cool. And I don't I don't think a lot of people, even enough people might have noticed or talked about it. But like when you look at it, it's cool because she had like more of the big hair. Right. Like the if you think more about like 50s, not necessarily that style, but just a bigger hair. You know what I mean? Like women, you know, correct me on terms and how all that kind of stuff. So that I would say cool. Like you look great and it's more of that queen. I'm a queen aspect of things. Creative. That's when we talk about. All right. She should do a pop up in a hair salon and go to these mm -hmm. different cities and things like that. Create something that no one else can create because you are Beyonce. However, regular would be hop on YouTube, do regular hair reviews 
or I'm mean, like not product reviews, but like, hey, this is me washing my hair. I'm washing mm-hmm. blue ivy hair. You know, I don't know how much you want to actually integrate your children into it. Like that's a personal decision. But like just literally in the same way, the you know, the women who do reviews like will use the product and go through it. Do that yourself. But also you being regular come down to the ground. Of course, you want to get as many other mm-hmm. women to do that as possible and and build that out where they're talking about you not just because it's beyonce she got some new stuff but also like at some point they start to feel like well you know beyonce is cool i'm gonna talk about it just because like i feel like beyonce really rocks with us as Mm -hmm. hairstylists really rocks with us Mm -hmm. as you know hair youtubers like she really supports us and gets us yeah you gave me like three ideas and beyonce team if y'all hear this brother this is very bag worthy in my opinion um but you remember, I think it was Alex Hermosi that talked about early in his gym days, he would go to different gyms and do like a like a supplement, kind of like reskin. Like he would convince them to get his supplements and go to different gyms and just talk to them. I think mm-hmm. she could do like exactly like you said, a salon tour. I'm gonna go to different salons across the country and you know give them free product to use for a week and then document what that experience looked like and you know the positive things that came of it. That would be cool because, like you said, showing love to the um, the hairstylist community, the, the beauty industry in that way. And then I also think maybe starting some type of challenge where she's, like you said, challenging women to use her product for a certain amount of time and document, you know, their own changes or glow up or, you know, things that were good that happened because of it. Cause now you can bring other people's stories into it. And, you know what I'm saying? Use their stories for marketing. And then the last thing I thought of is I think she needs a video series where she's a bit more vulnerable and talking about what specific things the hair product helped her with personally. So like, was your hair mm. dry and you use your own, you know, moisturizing serum to, to make your, your hair great. better? Was it flat and you use your own, you know what I'm saying, spray to make it more uh, voluminous, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I think like being, um, being personal in that way and being transparent in that way about like what her own personal issues were and how this helped fix it would go a very long way. I, I love that one because use this moment to show us a flaw that we can't see. Yep. A right. Because yep. when you think about it, we only see you looking amazing. Yep. So why do you even need this? So then you'd have to go, oh, I've been wearing wigs all this time to do what I do mm-hmm. as a performer. And because of that, that's made my hair suffer in one, two, three types of ways. Mm-hmm. I use this product to improve that. Yep. Right. Those simple things. Now, take that all the grain of salt. You know, we're just like, you know, two mere marketers in a room <laughs> in the middle of, of, you know, a state in the United States. You know what I'm saying? That's all we are. And, and we happen to be men. Women, if y'all have any um, thoughts on this, especially, we would love uh, to hear y'all's thoughts. But we do. We have helped many men and women do, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> have some have some success. But, um, like, if y'all have any counterpoints, thoughts, we are always open to it because we just love the discussion. And... Shout out to Beyonce for giving another shot. We hope, I hope this one wins. <laughs> I hope this is this wins. <laughs> uh, but no, let's, let's, this is legit. No, I, but I do think this will be a this for me. I think you like you said this is one of the most believable ones naturally. She yeah. already has that going for her. Yeah, you're more believable already out the jump in terms of product. Yeah. So now you kind of just gotta take those next motions. Sell it, bro. I'm not going to believe it anymore. Yeah. Literally just use it one time, uh, probably, you know. It's crazy because she has the <laughs> brand that so many artists wish they have, but now that she's at that point, she actually has to get some of the brand that other artists have. Yeah, facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is crazy, but, you know, that's what happens when you have a career and you're not just a moment in time. There has to be eras of you as an artist. Yeah, facts. You know? that's a great point. With that being said, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is... We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.